This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, is there a way to make a turntable movie with a green screen background? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have the earthquake model here loaded in. And the question's asking about creating a green screen or chroma key effect on a turntable movie. So this usually involves having your subject and then the background behind your subject being a bright blue or bright green color. Then when rendered with this color behind the model, you can then take that green and isolate it out to give you a transparent effect of the model, allowing you to composite it into a different scene. So with Earthquake here, let's say I want to render a turntable movie of him inside a ZBrush but I want to be able to isolate him from the background later on for use in an external application. So before we render our turntable movie, the first thing we need to do is change our background canvas color. And this can be done by going to the document panel here and then going to this back area. Now if you hover over back and click, this is going to assign the document background color the color you have selected right here. So currently I had white selected, so I went to document and click this now assign that color to my background. So if I come over here and change this to say yellow and go back to the document palette, click, the background color will now become yellow. You can also click and drag to pick a color in your scene. So if I click and drag on the document background color here, I'm going to get a pick icon. And now I can come across any area in the ZBrush UI or on my canvas, and you're gonna see it's going to allow me to pick a color. So let's say I want to change the background to a specific color, so a specific blue or a specific green, to use with this green screen or chroma key process. So to do this, I can go to the color palette, and then in here I can change the red, green, and blue values to the color I want. So I'm going to change this down to 0 red, 255 green, and 0 blue. You'll notice when I change the component values here that my main color is going to be updated. So now this is now displaying as that pure green color. So now I can go back to the document palette here. I can click on back. It's now going to take that main color and apply as my background color. And now I have earthquake in my scene here with a green canvas background. So now that I have this background set to that color, I can now generate my turntable movie. So I'm going to go to the movie palette here and open this up. And I'm just going to click this icon here to dock it to the side. And while it's docked to the side here, I want to change some properties. So the first thing I want to change is from window to document. So currently in window recording mode, it's going to record the entire ZBrush interface. And I only want earthquake and the canvas background. So I'm going to change this to document. Then I can decide what size I want the movie generated at. So large is going to give me the pure size of my document image. Medium is going to be 50% of the size. And small is going to be 25% of the size. So I'm going to keep this at medium. Next, we probably want to disable some of the options here, such as the title image. So I'm going to open this up, change the fade in time and fade out time to zero, and then open up the overlay image and change this to zero as well. So now I just want to generate a turntable. So I'm going to make sure Earthquake is positioned in my scene, and I'm going to come up here and click Turntable. When you click this button, ZBrush is now going to process multiple images of Earthquake here revolving around a center point. After this is done, you can now come up here and click play movie by clicking this option here, and this will now play the movie you just recorded. So you can see I have Earthquake spinning around, he's at 50% size, and his background is green. Now if I want to redo that turntable movie, I can come over here and click delete. This will delete the recorded movie I just generated. And let's say I want to do it at the large size, I'm going to click large here, and now I'm going to do that turntable again. After this is completed, I can come to Play Movie again, and this will now play the turntable. So you see I have Earthquake here with that green background. So if that is what I want in my scene, I can now come over here and export this. If I want to export at the highest quality, I can toggle this on. And then I can click the Export button here, and this will allow me to export that turntable movie out as an MPG file. Now another thing with creating turntables is I'm going to come here and just delete this one quick, is that you can also use it with BPR. So I'm going to set my document back to medium, and now I want to render with BPR. So I'm going to set my SPICs down to zero, just to make this a little bit faster. And with Earthquake here, if I render with BPR first, you're going to see I'm going to get these shadows generated in the model. So if the BPR image is active, 
and now I come over here and click Turntable. It's now going to process that Turntable with Earthquake, but at each frame, it's going to render with BPR. So before, it was just doing it in preview mode, but if you render with BPR first and then activate the Turntable, it will now render each frame of the Turntable in BPR. So this is going to give me some shadowing as Earthquake revolves. So I'm going to come over here and click Turntable again. Now after that is finished, you will notice that processing the Turntable movie with BPR is going to take quite a bit of time. And after it is done, if I now come up here and click Play Movie, you're going to see now I have the Turntable of Earthquake with shadows, and then he's also on that green screen background. Now one more note for using Turntable with BPR is that you can also use it with any BPR filters. So if I press comma on my keyboard here to go into Lightbox, and then I go to Render Set, and then in here I'm just going to select a different preset. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select the Watercolor Ink Style, and just double click this. And when you double click a render set, what it's going to do, it's going to change your render properties and also the BPR filtering system. So now with Earthquake here, if I come through and render with BPR, you'll see that this is the effect I'm getting. So now it's rendering Earthquake and then it's applying some non-photorealistic styling to the model. So now let's say I want to take this and render a turntable. So I'm going to come back to my movie palette over here. I'm going to click delete and just delete my pre-recorded turntable. I'm going to change my movie size to large. You'll notice that the background is still that nice green color and I'm currently just rendered in BPR, so I'm getting this effect. So now if I run the turntable option again, it's going to process Earthquake, rendering each frame with BPR, and since BPR is giving me this filter effect, I'm now gonna get a turntable with this NPR filtering. So I can come back over here and click turntable, and once again, since it is rendering in BPR, it's gonna take a little while here, so I'm just gonna process this quick. So after this is finished, I now come up here to the Play Movie option again and click Play Movie. And you'll see I have Earthquake now and he's got this rendered NPR style as he rotates around. So once again, to recap, in order to set up a green screen or chroma key effect inside a ZBrush, you just need to go to the Document Palette and change this Back option here to change your document background color. After it is the color that you would like it to be, you can then come up here to the movie palette and generate your turntable, and then simply export this out, and this will export out that turntable as an MPG file, and then you can now use that to composite into another scene or movie. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing!